when trying to link to our feet. And we also have Lee Nunes here with, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm Lee Nunes with the NC Choices Program, which is uh, part of the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. And we're both here today to talk a little bit about some of the different options that are out there to help conserve your farm for the next generation. And so when we talk about next generation, that can come in a lot of different formats. That could be, you know, your heirs, um, it could be children or other um, relations. It could also be, um, you know, someone, the next generation of farmers, a young person who wants to farm or tend land and does not have access to that land. It also could be someone maybe, um, we've worked with farmers who maybe did not have any children in the area, but they've had someone who has tended their land for you know, the last 30, 40 years and want to work out a way to both conserve their property, but then also pass that along to someone who has invested in their property as much as they have. So we're going to talk about a bunch of different options from both kind of um, short-term planning options to long-term permanent options like conservation. If you're not familiar with trying the Land Conservancy, we do have a table out there. We've got lots of newsletters, information on us. We are a 501c3 that works to protect land in the Triangle area. So when what we call Triangle, Lake County sits right in the heart of that, but we do also work in Johnson County, Lee, Chatham, Orange, and Durham counties. This map shows our service area. It also um, shows these kind of larger green blobs, what we refer to as our priority areas, and then green dots, which are areas we have completed a conservation partnership. In addition to that, you'll see these kind of little girls running, um, this blue hiker here. These are nature preserves. We run a system of seven, about to be eight, nature preserves that are open to the public from dawn to dusk every day and are free and have you know limited infrastructure, um, but you know, trails and other facilities for the public on them. Our priority areas, you'll notice that there are green dots outside of these priority areas. We don't just work in our priority areas, but they are areas where we either have a secured funding resource for projects or have developed a conservation plan for that entire area. So in Wake County, that includes what we call the Upper Noose, or the False Lake Initiative. Um, there, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, there are some funding resources for protecting farms and forests in this area that help support water quality for the city of Raleigh. In addition, Swift Creek, which is another watershed initiative, and then in Eastern Wake, um, we also have an initiative in the Marks Creek area. And I probably need to put a big green blob up here because we are also trying to get a water quality um, watershed protection initiative started for Jordan Lake. So in total, in our 37 years, we've helped protect over 20,000 acres across the triangle. And we own and manage about 7,000 acres ourselves. So what are some of the things you can do to protect or conserve your land? Well, one of the greatest things you can do is what you're doing right now. You know, reach out to your resource professionals, um, look at all the options that are out there, talk with soil and water, talk with extension, um, talk with us, you know, work on things like a conservation plan for your farm, forest management plan, forest stewardship plan, uh, farm transition planning. Having all of these things in place will help you get the right resources for your farm and property. And then if you go to pursue longer term options, like something like a conservation easement or sale of your property, having these first steps in place can really set you up for additional resources, whether that's management resources or funding resources. Um, one thing I meant to list up here, but I didn't have, is the Voluntary Agricultural District. Are any of y'all in what is known as the VAD? One, two, three. She's applying to daddy. Oh, great. Well, if you're not in it, I highly suggest enrolling in it if you have the intention of um, staying on your farm. Wake County actually just changed their ordinances on this. I guess it was about a year or two ago. 
Um, it used to be a little bit restrictive. You had to have 100 acres in Lake County to be enrolled in the VAD. Um, but now they have changed it to meet the present use valuation standards. So um, they talked about that earlier in the day, but if you have 20 acres of forestry, the five acres of horticulture, the 10 acres of ag land, you can enroll in a voluntary ag district. Um, there are some things that come along with this, like they give notification if a development comes in next to your farm. Um, and then it's also just a great network of farmers and those interested in the county and seeing their farm stay as a farm. Uh, in addition to VAD, uh, there's other programs out there. Um, one program I wanted to bring up was FarmLink and Noah stayed for a second round, so I'll let him give a quick uh, summary again on what FarmLink is and how that can help support agriculture on your property. Sure, uh, a program with a cooperative extension running through every county and state. You have access to it online at cfarmlink.cbs.ncsc.edu. And it's essentially, uh, as you said, it's a Match.com for farming. <laughs> I don't usually promote it that way. But um, <laughs> essentially, you can get on there as a farm owner, landowner, uh, just like a farm seeker. People who are looking for farms or an existing farmer looking for more land will get on there. You set up an account, you set up a profile under that account that lists if you're, in the case of a landowner, farm owner. Um, what kind of resource you have, what farm opportunity you have. That can be something you want to sell, something you want to lease, long-term lease, short-term lease, whether you're looking for a business partner, whether you're just looking for an employee, you can list all those opportunities for any subset. And then a farm seeker would be online looking for those kinds of opportunities. You can filter it by county, you can filter it by region. Um, if you just want someone with beef cattle interest, you can filter it by type of production. Uh, just have a look at it, and if you need, you can drop me a line through the website, and I'll be glad to follow up. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, so this, these are some of the kind of shorter term, the zero to ten year things you should be looking at. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to dive in a little bit more detail to some of these longer term options for considering your farm, which include conservation easements or a conservation sale or donation. So what is a conservation easement? Um, just a show of hands, have you all heard of easements? I know some of you have been in my talks before. Okay, great. Um, so it is a voluntary agreement between a landowner and a qualified organization that permanently limits certain uses of the land to protect conservation values. With working lands, what TLC and our landowners are looking to do is protect the soil and water resources on your farm. This is a permanent legal agreement. It's attached to the deed um, that restricts certain future uses. So in kind of real estate law, they always refer to property as a bundle of sticks. And those sticks are certain rights. So your mining rights, your forestry rights, your development rights, um, subdivision rights. And what an easement does is restrict some of those rights. Most often, it restricts your development and subdivision rights. So if you have a 100-acre farm and you record a conservation easement on all or a portion of that farm, in the farm area that is covered by a conservation easement, um, it would limit your ability in the future to subdivide that into 100 one-acre lots or you know, put 20 houses on it. Um, and what it does in return is that it does protect those soil and water resources and also makes sure that your farm stays as a farm. Um, so if that's something you value, it can be a great legal tool to help you protect it. These are just some examples of easements we hold in Lake County. Um, you have an easement grantee, Triangle Land Conservancy, so we, when we have an easement, we actually have an interest in your property, although we are not responsible for management or maintenance. Um, that all falls to the landowner. The landowner continues to own and manage the property and can also sell the property or transfer the property to heirs. They just can't you know, subdivide it or um, build a huge parking lot on it. 
Uh, so about 3,000 acres protected in Wake County. Uh, this is an easement that you can actually access as the public. Uh, years ago, we worked with some, a man named Jefferson Sugg down outside of Fuquay Arena uh, in Holly Springs. When I worked on this project, I thought it was in the middle of nowhere, and now it is two miles from downtown Holly Springs. It's right across from Bass Lake Park, um, about 150 acres. And at the time, he was raising longhorn spear out there, which was <laughs> always fun to go visit. Unfortunately, um, he passed away, and part of his reasoning on doing the easement was he knew none of his heirs wanted to continue to farm the land, but he wanted you know, this property that he had put all this energy and effort in to stay as a farm. Um, so he was right. When he passed away, his heirs uh, shortly after put the farm on the market. Um, now we had a recorded conservation easement on this, so it's one of the few tracks in that area that was not sold for development. And the town of Holly Springs actually came in and bought the property um, from the heirs and turned it into a passive recreation park. They have all kinds of events out there. You can um, go and walk around uh, and visit, and it's open to the public. But because that conservation easement is on it, again, their soil and water resources are protected. Um, we talk with the town, you know, they've come to us a few times. We really need a huge parking lot, you know, um, to support all the public that is coming here. Well, we had laid out in that easement some areas where they could have what we call impervious surface. Um, and, you know, they could put parking spots there, but they couldn't build five acres of parking on the property because of the easement. Um, another example of an easement that had both forestry and cattle and working lands on it. This one is in Eastern Lake. Um, this property is in the Marks Creek area, which I'm gonna talk about in a little more detail in a bit. Uh, Winsong Farm. A uh, little bit of unfortunate circumstances. This property is adjacent to a 405 acre piece, the Williamson track that we own. And we have been working with the landowners for a long time. They really love this property, um, historic home, the Joseph Blake house, and have been on the property for about 40 years. And unfortunately, you know, we're in their 80s and her husband had a stroke um, and they just were not in a place where they could stay on the farm nor were any of their children in a place where they could come back and run and operate the farm. But they really wanted to see it conserved, but they also needed to move into a continuing care facility. So we worked with the landowners, we knew they were gonna put out on the market um, to purchase an easement with them before they put it on the market. So we recorded a permanent conservation easement, and then they listed the farm for sale contingent to that easement. A young couple with three kids from uh, who work at NC State actually ended up buying the property and are raising cattle and have a few horses out there. And it's just been a wonderful transition. And I think the Conyers are very happy to know that the farm is still in production and being used by the next generation. Another unique property, this one actually falls outside. This is in Durham County. Um, this is Ursi Farm, which is right about here, but I wanted to highlight it because it is in an area known as the Upper Noose. Um, so the Upper Noose is the watershed for Falls Lake, and this is one of our priority areas, and it's a little unique in that the city of Raleigh, if anyone here pays a city of Raleigh water bill, you helped fund this project. Now, most of you, if you're on farms, probably um, have well water, but for all of the half a million drinking water customers in the city of Raleigh, there's a watershed protection fee that generates about 2.25 million a year for land protection in that release. And why did Raleigh do this? Well, because their main drinking water supply, they had very little jurisdiction in. I think city of Raleigh has maybe 1,100 acres of you know zoning control and jurisdiction in the entire Falls Lake watershed, 
but the quality of Falls Lake water has a huge impact on growth and um, quality of life for the city of Raleigh. So uh, they came up with an innovative program where water consumers are helping to support watershed protection through the protection of farms and forests in the watershed. Um, this was kind of a unique group. It was a collective um, in Durham, and they had purchased 11 acres, and the 40 acres adjacent to them came up for sale. Um, they reached out to TLC to see if we could help them purchase it. Uh, they originally said, well, can you buy this land and we'll lease it for you? And we looked at different management settings, and what we ended up doing was helping them purchase an easement. So we recorded an easement on this property, which brought the land value down, and then they were able to buy the land and continue to own and manage it. And that easement was funded through the Watershed Protection Fund. Uh, another farm, this is just a horse farm, I think in the Little River Reservoir area of Wake County. Uh, this project, if any of y'all were here about three years ago, a young farmer spoke, Daniel Dayton, and he is running a small farm on about 10 acres on this 130-acre tract. This is Beaver Dam Lake. If anyone came by 540, you'll see these kind of two lakes sitting off there. Well, we have an easement that protects 130 acres in that area. Again, the easement has some water quality buffers on it, but it allows for um, you know, farming, forestry, and continued uses on the track. This is an example of more forest-related easements. Um, we have, this is an easement in the Green Level area of Southwest Lake County. When I originally did this easement as well, 12 years ago, there was nothing out there. Um, is anyone in that area? Basically, when 540 came through, um, you know, water and sewer lines were run everywhere. And now this 40-acre farm, which is beautiful in the historic district, is surrounded by townhouses on two of the three sides of the farm. But um, one of the main reasons this farm landowner was interested in protecting this farm was, one, it was in this rural historic district that he had grown up in all his life. Um, it was a family farm, and he just wanted to know that this little piece of green level, now known as Cary, unfortunately, um, was pre preserved and protected. He also had invested a lot um, in trees and forestry on his site. Uh, these are some long leaves, and you know, they're now taller than me, which is exciting to see. And, you know, wanted to work on an easement because he was putting all his time and energy and investment into the forest resources on his farm and just kind of wanted to know that that would be there for the next generation. So I can talk about examples of easements all day long, but I think it kind of sounds better and connects a bit more if I show you an example um, of some work we've been doing in Chatham County. I wish we had one of these movies for Wake County, and I hope in you know, five, ten years we'll get there. Um, but these are three landowners we've worked with in Western Chatham, and all three of them have um, put conservation easements on their farm. One last <laughs> special to me because it's something that I have fixed and done with my own hands, with my own labor. It's something I've always wanted to do since I was four years, five years old, was to be a farmer. When I moved to this farm, it had been sodden, and planted, and all the fields had been sprayed with herbicides, and it was really a wreck and a mess. It has taken me 40 years to bring it back, and actually this 40th year, the fields look the best they've looked in 40 years. I wanted to protect the farm with my conservation easement because of all these years of putting all this work into my farm. I didn't want a development to go up on my land as soon as I was under the ground six feet. I wanted to keep this beautiful place like it is. 
we've got a tremendous history in agriculture here in Silco. People in Chatham, I think, have a connection to agriculture. Now, we're getting a lot of development pressures. We're getting a lot of people moving in. But I know they like to drive through the countryside and see cattle and see open spaces and see trees. And that kind of thing. that's what drew them to Chatham County, one of the things that drew them to Chatham County anyway. At some point, and I don't know where it's going to be, at some point, people are going to really value the farmer and value what we actually do because if it wasn't for us, people would be hungry. This land is very special to us. Land that my grandfather purchased in the early 40s. We are down to eight dairies in the county. From roughly back in the 40s, there was probably 200 dairies in the county. That's our heritage. Chatham County is a rural county, and uh, that's why it is important. That's how most people make their living. our farm with an easement so that you could sit right here where we're sitting today and look out and see the same thing 50 years from today. I'm glad to see that easements and just the, the farmland preservation thoughts is coming into a lot of farmers' minds now that probably wouldn't have thought about it a few years ago. This land is a part of my being. I feel it's really something from inside of me. With the help of Triangle Land Conservancy, more people will be able to put aside their land and sell their development rights because with the economy the way it is and times as tough as they are, farmers need a little help to be able to continue on. And it wasn't about money, it was really about concern about the land and what happens to our future for our families and what ha what would it mean if there was no farmers to farm the land, the one they land to farm. Those are three landowners. We work with in that area of Chatham County, known as um, the Silk Hope area. We're still working on that goal. Um, we're making good progress. We've done about 950 acres in that area, and our goal is really to help conserve this intact farm community. Um, and we have similar goals in portions of Wake County. So, how does this easement impact your land? Well. Um, with our working lands easements, you know, if you continue to own and manage the property, um, you set the management plan, farming, forestry, passive recreation, hunting, fishing, all of these uses are allowed as part of the easement. And again, you retain the right to transfer the property or sell the property, it's just contingent to that easement. Not all our easements are the same. Anytime we are working with a landowner who's interested in an easement, we really sit down and document their intentions and the easement is modified to meet those needs. Um, these take time. You know, it's a permanent long-term decision, so it's not something anyone should hop into lightly. Um, and depending on the amount of resources you need can greatly impact the time. So, um, We've had some very generous outright donations of easement. Um, there are some federal tax incentives that can complement that. Um, those projects usually take anywhere from a couple months to a year or so. Um, there are some funding resources available for easements. Um, the county just passed its bond. I don't know if it, um, they had 120 million in that for open space. It's our understanding that a portion of that is going to go towards easements. And when they put out a request to landowners, they did ask if any landowners were interested in easements. So that could be a local funding resource that's available. There are also state and federal funds that can help support the purchase of an easement. Of course, the more funding resources you put into the project, the more time it takes. Um, I, typically find it's kind of exponential. You know, you put 
one funding source in there, it's going to take you twice as long. You put three in there, it's going to take you three times as long. But um, it can really provide some financial incentive and benefit to the landowner to currently conserve their land. Now, with that said, you probably, especially with an easement, never going to realize the value on your property as if you put it on the market and sold it to a developer. So, um, really, this is something that you should really only explore if one of your main goals is that permanent conservation of the property. Timing wise, this is from the North Carolina State Agricultural Development and Farmland Preservation Trust Fund. They have a few million every year that um, can go towards easements, as I'm sure you can imagine, especially with Wake County land prices that does not go very far. But we have been successful at leveraging this money with other local and federal resources. This is their timeline. You can see from initial conversations to actually closing the easement, um, looking at anywhere from two to four years. So it's not a quick process, but um, again, I, I don't think it's something that should be quick since it is permanent and binding. So that's a quick summary of easement. I do have a handout that has a few more details and we're always happy you know, to take questions or meet with you one-on-one -on -one and really talk about your specific scenario. In addition to conservation easements, um, I mentioned the county funding. TLC works with a lot of landowners who maybe are considering a sale to the county or to another entity. Uh, we can help and assist you in that process. Uh, we also sometimes, you know, are able to buy land or assist the county or state parks or someone like that in the acquisition of the property. Uh, this is the Turnip Sea Preserve, which is in the Marks Creek area. Wake County just opened this um, last year to the public, but um, TLC actually originally bought the original 20 acres, transferred it to the county, and then helped work with the landowner to add, and it's now a 250-acre preserve. In addition to assisting landowners, TLC does actually own and purchase property outright ourselves. Uh, this was a, a property we bought 40 acres. It's off of Highway 50. It sits behind the Ram Bryan house. It backs up to Lake Benson. Um, so we own and manage this property. Uh, we were able to purchase it again with some of that watershed protection funding. Another example, this is actually in Orange County, but is a property we own and manage. Um, this is the urban farm. We were incredibly fortunate in that uh, we were left as a bequest a 270 acre farm just outside of Carborough Chapel Hill. Uh, as part of the bequest, they really did not want this to be an open nature preserve. They wanted it to continue to support agriculture and education training. So we have partnered with several groups, including an outdoor kindergarten, as well as a group, um, Transplanting Traditions, which is a, another group of Karen refugees, and they're farming this land um, and producing uh, local produce, as well as lots of training events, etc. that go out there. Last one I'm gonna talk about is a really exciting project for us. This is the Bailey and Sarah Williamson Preserve at Walnut Hill. This is in that Marks Creek area again. We are getting ready to open this on April 25th. You're all invited. Uh, this will be kind of a new venue for us and that is going to be both a farm and nature preserve. So in the long run, we'll have about 10, 15 miles of trails on this property, but then we also plan to have 130 acres of land that is in production. Um, it's located in the Shotwell area. We just restored on the front of it an old barn pack house, and this is now our new satellite office. So I'm out in the Shotwell areas a couple days of the week, as well as our farm manager, Eliza, stop by and see us, and then April 25th, from that point forward, come out to the farm anytime from dawn to dusk. Um, it's free and open to the public. So this 400 acre track has been a really exciting project for us. Um, it's a project we've worked on at TLC for about 20 years. 
It originally started off as a conservation easement. Uh, the landowners, Bailey and Sarah Williamson, wanted to see their farm permanently protected. Uh, over the course, they ended up having some health issues. Unfortunately, Bailey passed away, and then Sarah did as well. The two daughters, um, Sally Greaser and Betty Britt Williamson, really wanted to see their parents' intentions honored. Uh, this was a family farm that had been in their family for over 200 years. And so they worked with us and decided, you know, we really don't want to manage 400 acres of land. Um, they live on the site and, you know, we're, we're in the 50s and just felt that it would be better off in TLC's management. So instead of a conservation easement, we actually worked with them to um, purchase the property, receive money from Wake County, Johnson County, it splits the county line, and about four other resources so, to do what we call a bargain sale and are working on um, turning it into a barn and nature preserve. And one of their requests was they really wanted to see the agricultural legacy continued on this farm. So we developed an agricultural plan for the property and started reaching out because we wanted to support that next generation of farmers. And that's where we really got involved in Lee. And I'm gonna turn it over to Lee to talk a little bit about the work he's doing out there and across the state. So my name is Lee Minnis. I work for NC Choices program, which is a marketing program through the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. And we focus on pasture-raised meat production in North Carolina and developing the uh, far helping farmers and processors and, and developing that overall sector of uh, agriculture. And so as part of this program, we were able to pair with TLC through a USDA Beginning Farm Rancher Grant. Um, that we got, and as part of it is they, the rent was that they would donate a portion of this farm to be used for a beginning farmer rancher to have access. So one of the biggest challenges for beginning farmers is that these days is with the increase in land prices and development and everything else, a lot of the bigger farms keep getting bigger and it makes it hard for smaller farms to come in and be able to compete and find access to land unless you have that family connection and have or have a neighbor or family connection. So what we're working with on this grant is trying to figure out how can we look at non-traditional lease opportunities for these beginning farmers. And so the three areas we're looking at is in silvopasture, which is taking uh, lands that are in forestry production. And so when they get to that, mint, that final thinning, thinning out and planting forages below, and then basically double cropping it with trees and, and grazing animals. Um, and then also the solar farms. North Carolina's number two in solar production in the country. One of the fastest growing regions behind California. Um, so we've had a lot of solar farms that have popped up over the last 10, 15 years. And they range anywhere from five or 10 acres on up to uh, five, five, 600 acres. And, but these off, offer good opportunities, they are, um, a lot of them are going on to marginal farmland. Marginal farmland in North Carolina has traditionally been grazing land. Um, and so as these pop up and they're opened up, a lot of grass underneath them, so it, op it offers an opportunity for beginning farmers to come in and establish farmers to bring sheep in and graze these and, and raise sheep on these farms. And it serves purposes that um, allows the solar companies who are already in the environmentally friendly business to opt for sheep to be lawnmowers instead of folks riding on lawnmowers. Um, so it's kind of a win-win situation, but it's, it's a new frontier and it's a, a new challenge for different, for the companies and for farmers as well. And then lastly, we're looking at uh, land that's under conservation easement. So like Leanne was talking about, a lot of these farms are still in private ownership, even though they have the easements on them. But it may be a situation where the landowners want to see it stay in farmland and see it can carry on to the next generation, but they may not have that next generation to follow them on there. And so this offers an opportunity that A, that we can get uh, keep that farmland productive and active and working land and offer an opportunity for beginning farms to, to have access to land through these easement protected things, uh, areas. Because one of the, the hardest parts for beginning farmers, and when we say beginning farmers, we're referring to farmers with less than 10 years in business. 
does not mean less than 10 years experience. Uh, a lot of us, you know, grew up on track, starting on tractor when you're five years old, at 35 years old, you got 30 years experience, but you don't have 10 years experience in the business itself. Um, and so as you get in, the first couple of years in business, you're working through your production, you're kind of figuring out your groove and what your niche is. But when you hit that five, say three to seven year mark, that's really a critical area of beginning farmers. People either get out or they make a, they're, they're poised to make a go at it. And having land access in this critical piece can be the opportunity to get them to expand and see them into future success. So that's the basis behind this. Uh, this is one of the things we're working on with um, out at the Williamson Preserve is that we were able to pair with TLC and use our contacts to cooperative extension, soil and water, NRCS, and different groups uh, around to, to put out a cast a wide net looking for beginning farmers and then help them vet through the applicants to find some uh, a young couple that was makes a nice pairing out there. And this is Jake and Catherine Nubo uh, here with their Paul Herford cows. They've, he's managed to farm for another farmer. He's um, been doing it on his own, but land access was a big issue for him, being able to find somewhere in eastern Rowan County that he could rent those of, of a, a good size for his operation to start growing. And so they made a, a good pairing by bringing him on here at the preserve and uh, he's able to utilize some of the land. And Choices is able to step in and help with TLC and with Jake and provide technical assistance. So we worked with him to figure out what his grazing plan would look like and how much land and how many animals that land would support uh, and do it in a manner that met the uh, original goals of TLC and, and the family that had preserved the land to begin with. But he's they're really excited to expand off of their home six or seven acres farm and uh, he's now gained access to about 20 acres out here at the Williamson Preserve so it's a nice step up for him. All right so um, just a few examples on how we're all trying to keep the farms in Lake County. You know, I think Lake County has a strong agricultural history and with the development we're facing, it's just disappearing a little too quickly for all of us. So um, I have cards up here. I think we may have some as well, as well as some brochures that talk specifically about working lands conservation. We're happy to take any questions and also happy um, to meet um, you out at your farm or in our new podcast office or anywhere and talk about these options in more detail. I have a question about this. Sure. Um, it's changed. Does that mean you have to have either five acres or ten <coughs> acres or twenty, or you have to have thirty-five? Uh, the five, ten, or twenty. So yeah. we want. Yeah. So you can just have one of each. I mean, or you just have to have one of the above. So you just got to qualify for present use value, which is we, that's yeah. the specifications okay. for that. Okay. A question for you, and possibly for Noah too. Um, mm -hmm. When you're connecting farms and farmers, are you also a resource for helping figure out uh, rent, I guess, um, and like how, you know, a, a sort of structure for releasing that farm or that land? Yeah, and um, Andrew Brandon, who's yeah. talking in one of the other sessions, is actually on our support team cool. for this project. Um, he's an extension attorney for NC State, and so he's been instrumental in helping us to, I mean, we went through there's what three three months of going back and forth to, to make sure because TLC, you know, the the conservationist groups have a specific outline mm -hmm. that they they use and they have their bullets that they need to tick for their organizational um, goals. And so we were able to work with them and then work with Jake and, and kind of be in the middle and not really advocating for one or the other, but just trying to make sure that everybody got what they needed at the end of the day. So in a situation like that, the young farmers who are just starting are leasing the land from TLC, but in other cases they might be leasing from a farmer who has those preservation interests. Right, and and directly, kind of figure out same that. thing, with, but directly with the landowner versus yeah. where it's in this place TLC is to landowner. And you would help figure out the value of that. Yeah, that's one of the things we've been trying to work with. You work with your local extension agents, they have usually have a good feel for what the going rate is around. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then with this, another part of this project is these lease templates that we're developing will be available. And they're actually, uh, Andrew's already got some of these up on his um, Ag Economics website. Cool. And Noah, does your site have examples? Well, we have a, it's actually Andrew's uh, template, maybe a little bit tweaked, it's up on our website as a PDF. There's another web page I've been working on, it's not public yet, but it has uh, two links to, it's a build your own lease feature that uh, I think Vermont uh, came out with and land for good, which are two groups in the Northeast. Uh, and the trick about leases, the trick, the strategy is to the KISS principle, keep it as simple as possible, but make sure that the details are there. And you know, with a with a good open discussion between the landowner and a prospective tenant, you can iron these things out um, in most cases. And sometimes if, if you do need an objective third party, an agent or some other um, landscape person. Uh, the links on the new website have 2019-2017 rent data by county, but um, that's a that's a pretty broad brush mm -hmm. and uh, it really depends on, on uh, resources that are included in the lease. Is it fenced? Is there access to water? Um, do you have you know, a shelter that you can use barn or something? So those things add value to the base rate. Okay. Um, and I had a question for you, if that's okay. Um, when you say purchase uh, easements, is that something you're purchasing from the landowner? Like CLC purchases it? How, what, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, so. Um, Anytime you're working on a conservation easement, that easement has a value. We get a certified appraisal to value that easement. So say the farm's worth a million dollars at its highest and best use, um, which unfortunately in Wake County is most likely going to be residential or commercial development. When you put a conservation easement on that, it obviously takes away the ability to do that residential subdivision. So then it has a little bit lower value. Typically we see between 50 and 70 percent um, for that easement value. So say it was worth a million dollars. After the easement, um, the appraiser says now it's worth $400,000. That difference, that $600,000, is your easement value. Now, there's a couple financial incentives that can be used um, to help compensate the landowner um, for giving up those development rights. Um, they range everywhere from donating those development rights outright, which in that case, the landowner can often take advantage of federal tax incentives, to purchasing that easement outright, um, which there are some local, state, and federal resources to do that. Um, so in that case, you know, the landowner could potentially get up to $600,000 in value for that easement. Now I will note, Wake County land values are really high, and it is competitive at the state and federal level. But, you know, we have been successful at purchasing easements on a few farms in the county, and are also hoping that the county itself, um, you know, will work with us and landowners um, with some of that bond money or other resources to purchase easements as well. So do you actively look land or do landowners come to you? Both. Yeah. And do you just work with young, um, young farmers? Like the, um, what was your guideline? For, for our program, we, program, for this grant program we're working on, we do, yes. Okay. But we try to lend support to any farmers that we can. Well, my husband's a pumpkin farmer here in Wake County. He's probably maybe the biggest pumpkin farmer. But his land that he rents, we don't own that much land. Uh, we don't own really much farmland at all. But he, the land he rents is being taken away by the new road. So he's um, going to have to look land down. He's been doing this years. So I mean, this is his primary income. So I didn't know if there's any. For, for I mean, I, I already talked yeah. to him, so that's definitely something he'll be looking into. Well, and this program is to prevent new and beginning farmers. But at TLC, we're also trying to provide continued access to farmers. So, um, you know, we oftentimes will have landowners that maybe have an easement on their property or something and are looking for a new farmer. So we're 
In addition, at this Williamson um, Preserve, we are um, recruiting more farmers in addition to Jake's, and we're actively looking for um, some additional farmers to be on that site. Yeah, the overall plan of the whole farm is really awesome. Take that worked out. 